Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Modern Horizons 2 draft video. Now, I really want Braids to work in some kind of deck, but I don't know what that deck is. I really don't. I want it to work, I just have no idea what kind of deck to play it in. And I have not seen a good, I mean, a really good use of this card. Now, in the last deck we had, where we were making a million tokens and we could sack artifacts, that might be pretty insane. Let's try and make it work. No guarantees that it will, but let's let's take a look at it, see if it's possible, huh? Oh, well, now I have to pick between Unholy Heat, Arcbound Shikari. So Arcbound Shikari goes in some very broken decks and is probably the de facto if you take like take this card and make that deck. Unholy Heat is incredibly good removal. And we would be playing Madness if we were playing Black Red. Uh, I'm taking on Holy Heat. Somebody else is gonna get that card, and they're gonna draft the most. Look at this. We could have had, we could have had a great, could have had a great Arcbound deck. Oh, I did it again. I did it again. We'll take Imperial Recruiter. Imperial Recruiter can fetch Braids. It's just card advantage in red, which is good. Um, I think we got to take Bone Shards. Bone Shards is really, really strong removal. Um, if we end up getting Spreading Insurrection, it's a sack outlet for the cards we steal from our opponent. There's a Power Depot. Really wish I'd gone into the Artifact deck, but I didn't. I'm drafting Madness. So we'll see if we can make Madness work today. We do have four really good cards for the Madness deck. If we can get, um, like, Trap Runner to make tokens, to sack to Braids, any repeatable permanent generation is really good with Braids. Like, really good. Uh, Tragic Fall is excellent removal. Nested Shambler might go in a deck like this quite well. Underworld Hermit. When it enters the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 green squirrel creature tokens equal to your devotion to black. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that seems pretty good. I could definitely see this working with something like Braids. We get a few more black creatures. This could be quite good. Um, if we can get a Nested Shambler, Scophos Reaver, or Tragic Fall on the wheel from this pack, I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, Cabal Initiate... Ball Initiate is good in that it is a discard outlet for Madness. It is a black mana pip for Underworld Hermit. Faithless Salvaging I really like, but I tend to see that card more than I see this card. And I think Initiate is better, especially like, we, we need to pick some creatures early. Oh, come on! <laughs> now I could, I could play Green Black, actually. I could take Orchard Strider, and we could try and make Green Black work. Ugh. Gosh, I don't know. Somebody else is already in the Arcbound deck. I should not try and go into that now. I've passed too many cards. Guilt Blade Prowler could be good, just drawing extra cards. All right, we'll take the Guilt Blade Prowler. I'll stick with what I said I was going to do. Just something that Kano is not prone to do. Flay Essence is a really good removal spell. Like, a really good removal spell. Gouged Zealot would also not be bad. Uh, we, in theory, have a lot of ways to enable Delirium. Uh, I do like Gargadon a lot. Curator is also quite nice. Curator is a way to get rid of Braids, um, if Braids is causing a problem. We're, we're gonna take Gargadon. Gargadon is just so crazy strong. Greed came all the way around. That's interesting. I don't tend to see that happen. I'll take Greed. We are gonna focus on Black Mana Pips because of Underworld Hermit, but we are also playing Red, so. Manticore is just fine. Man, Funnel Web Recluse, though. Like, I could totally see sacking a token, investigating. I think green black is morbid, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna take a couple of the, the green cards here, we'll see. Black green is squirrel tokens. I'll take spreading insurrection. I'll take nested shambler. Parcel mirror in the side, step through in the side. Okay, well we'll keep an eye on the green cards here. Okay, um, Oh my god, we could have had a Nettle Cyst! I should have drafted the Artifact deck! This card is nuts! And it is too late. Yes, it is absolutely too late. Um, so my options are Flame Tongue, Yearling, Smell Fear, or Tragic Fall. I'm gonna take the Yearling, although it is quite tough on our mana. Fire is a pretty good removal spell. It's pretty good in the Delirium deck. Actually, it's not, because they're both instants, but you know what I mean. It's good in red and blue, because it is red and blue. Um... We'll take the Yearling. It's removal stapled to a body. I can't really complain that much. Um, there's an Orchard Strider. Scourge Familiar is another Madness outlet. I might take the Chancellor. 
It's a really good payoff. It gives us tokens to sack to braids if we want to as well. I'm going to take it. I'm going to keep it in mind. Cards like Kaleidoscorch definitely um, incentivize going for three colors, so it's not something that's completely unreasonable for me to do. I'll take Kaleidoscorch. There's a Shardless Agent. Um, is that, I don't think that Shardless Agent is worth anything. No, Shardless Agent's not worth anything. Uh, Vile Entumor, Monoskeleon, Crack Open. Entumor, there's nothing we have that we want in the grave. Slasher, we can just play as like a top-end haste creature. It's not great, but I already have one spreading insurrection. Yeah, we'll take Slasher. Another Underworld Hermit. Can we make some kind of black mana pip squirrel token work? It's a 6 mana 3-3 three, three that enters with 2-1-1, one, one, so it's a minimum of 6 mana 5-5 five, five split across three bodies. I will take the Underworld Hermit. Feast of Sanity almost always wheels. Void Mirror is not worth anything unless it's the old art. Dray Keeper. The other option is Mist Vault Bridge, which will help me splash for Chancellor, or Sinister Starfish, which is also very good. I'm going to speculate on, on Squirrels might be an availability. Another Underworld Hermit. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Vile and Tumor is another double black Minipipped card. It is an uncommon. It does have Death Touch. I'm going to take the Curator. It's more removal. We don't have anything we want in the grave specifically, so I think that makes Entumor worse. Um, in this pack, I guess I would take Bottle Golems, because I'm not playing any of these cards in basically any circumstances. I mean, maybe I play Hard Evidence if I'm playing Lazotep Chancellor and don't have quite enough cards. But Bottle Golems, I think, is more reasonable in a few more places. Okay, Orchard Strider. Orchard Strider, if we're playing green, can actually go and get red if we wanted to play Kaleidoscorch or Unholy Heat. We can splash for red for removal. That's reasonable. Gives us two artifacts to sack to braids. Basic land cycles to fix. I'm okay with that. Another Funnel Web Recluse. I think this is another good card. Crack Open or Vile and Tumor. I mean, unless we start splashing for a reanimation spell of some kind or get Persist, I don't think Entumor is that great. Unless there's a card in our deck we don't want to draw. I'm going to take Crack Open because not having a Naturalize really bit me last time. I'll take a Nested Shambler. So really what my deck looks like is this. And yes, I think Unholy Heat and Kaleidoscorch are completely splashable. Especially if you're playing the green deck. I have passed a lot of green cards, however. Um, I think we can still find enough cards to make a real deck here. Chatterstorm's fine. It's not amazing, but I would play it missing, you know, if I didn't have enough other stuff. Um, so many vile and tumors. I need stuff earlier on the curve. If I'm splashing red, despite the fact that Dragon's Rage Channeler is actually insane, I don't want to take it for this deck. Um, and my logic with that is, man, I could have had such a great red-white deck if I'd taken Zabaz. I'm not, mm, I'm upset about that. Um... I think I'm going to go with Vile and Tumor, because Dragon's Rage Channeler is like only works if we're primary red. And I could have been, but I've kind of switched at this point. I'm going to take in Tumor, hope to wheel Curator. Uh, yeah, there's like no green cards. Dang. Uh, I could, we could splash white instead, um, and try and get a, try and get some reanimation spells going. Return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That would be really good with Draykeeper. Um... All right, all right. Yeah, I'll take Graceful Restoration. Okay, hang on. Svelion might be worth money. Um, the regular one is two tickets. The old border one, I think, is very expensive. So we could take Discerning Taste to help us get through our deck faster. Maybe gain some life. Um, hoping to find some stuff to help me splash. Sojourner's Companion might fill that bill, but I'm going to take Bannerhide Crewshock. Uh, this is just a good generic green creature. Uh, there's another banner hide crew shock. Foundation Breaker is really strong, actually. Thorn Glint Bridge helps splash for Graceful Restoration. So I can take a main deckable Naturalize attached to a body. Yeah, I think the Foundation Breaker is better. It is really strong. Vermin Gorger is going to be good. Um, if we're making tokens, it's, you know, it's a way to get some reach. Uh, there's another banner hide crew shock. I could splash for Terminal Agony. I have a couple of discard outlets in the form of Bone Shards, Cabal Initiate. Um, actually, that's about it. The Crew Shock is interesting because it does synergize with Violent Tumor. This is a card I wouldn't mind putting in the grave. I don't think I'm going to have enough tokens for Glimmer Baron to work. And I don't want a red basic land cycler. Yeah, I'll take another Crew Shock. 
So I'm now drafting a very weird deck. Uh, one that I've definitely not drafted in the past. Because uh, generally, like, if I've drafted the Squirrels deck, I tried to focus on, like, getting the Squirrel Lords and trying to play low to the ground. Trying to do, like, a whole bunch of Nested Shambler shenanigans. Okay, so now we take either Feast of Sanity, which we're not going to be discarding that many cards, especially now that we're not playing the red cards, I think. Um, or we can take Urban Dagger Tooth, but we're, but we're heavy in the 4-drop slot regardless. I could take Fodder Tosser. We don't have a lot of 1-1 one -one counters. The Bannerhide Crew Shocks can synergize with Urban Dagger Tooth. Maybe that's enough, but it is a double green pip. All right, we'll take a Dagger Tooth. Okay, uh, Necromancer's Familiar is really strong. Crack Open makes a treasure. We already have two Naturalize effects, so maybe we don't need Crack Open. I'm kind of biased and think I should take this card. We have nothing with Madness at all, period. Crack Open makes a treasure for Graceful Restoration. We do have enough creatures to play this game. So I'm going to take I'll take the Crack Open. I'll take the Deepwood Denizen. Uh, I will take the Fodder Tosser. There's so many Anarchomancers going around, like an unreasonable amount. Take Discerning Taste. I have one basic Land Cycler and two cards that make treasures for fixing. And I'm trying to play four different colors. <laughs> Kano, you madman! Sinister Starfish actually helps a ton. <laughs> Funnel Web Recluse is fine. Um, all right. I, I guess I'll put some Echoing Returns in the sideboard, but I'm probably not playing them because I don't think I'm gonna have enough creatures with the same name that are all gonna be in the graveyard at the same time. I could make this a whole lot easier and not play Kaleida Scorch and not play Unholy Heat or not play Graceful Restoration. All right, hang on. Group creatures separately. Let's see what we're dealing with here. So I built a deck around braids. <laughs> I did say I was going to try and do that, and that is what is happening. The question is, how best to achieve this? So the problem with braids is we're going to have issues getting to this part of the curve. I really wish this said destroy up to one artifact or enchantment. That would make it a lot better. Okay, um, so we need to cut some number of creatures, and that probably means a funnel web recluse. Uh, I don't think I can actually play Chatterstorm, as it is unlikely it will. It's going to do that much. Uh, Flourishing Strike is really strong, especially with Nested Shambler, so I think it actually stays. We'll only be playing one Crack Open. We're probably not playing Fodder Tosser. Uh, Discerning Taste, we're only playing if we're playing Graceful Restoration. I'm not really discarding cards. I mean, I can I can discard for Reinforce, so maybe I don't need this Guilt Blade Prowler. Dagger Tooth, I'm worried, is really going to be hard to cast, but it's a very, very good creature. Sinister Starfish is just going to help us get to where we need to go. Nested Shambler is very good with Braids. I think I can't play Restoration, which means I can't play Discerning Taste. And the reason that I say that is because if I don't, or if I if I try and play Restoration, I don't think I can play Red, because um, I'm not making enough treasures and doing enough stuff. And if I don't play red, I lose Kaleidoscorch and Unholy Heat, which are two excellent removal spells that I just won't have enough removal otherwise. So I need to cut three more cards. With a Foundation Breaker in the main, it's possible I don't need Crack Open. We can just side in a bunch of Naturalize if we go up against the Artifact deck. That might be reasonable. We do lose one Treasure for Splashing, and our deck becomes a lot slower because we can't play a 5-drop on turn 4 without Cracking Open. I think I have to cut one Funnel Web Recluse, despite the fact that's one of my better creatures. I need to cut one more card. And my mind keeps going back to Dagger Tooth, but I'm not sure that's correct. Maybe it is Vile and Tumor. It does drop a lot of black mana pips, but like the only thing I would be putting into the grave is either Kaleidoscorch or Bannerhide Crewshock. Um, and that's really not a bad Vile and Tumor package. But I would feel so much better about it if we were playing Graceful Restoration. Or if we had a bunch of fight spells. If we had a bunch of fight spells, a Death Touch creature obviously goes up in value. I think I'm playing at least two mountains. And I probably should be playing three. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play three mountains. I need to play 17 lands, don't I? I just realized I have four six drops. And I Really, like it's probably just three six drops because that Orchard Strider is probably going to fix for us. But another 41 card deck. Kano, do you know what you're doing? The answer is no. I'll see you guys in round one. All right. I'm actually inclined to keep this because I have all of my colors of mana. Uh, I'm going to keep. We're on the draw. 
Our curve is top heavy anyway, so the extra lands might help. The only problem is if our opponent is playing the artifact deck. Alright, this might be a whole lot of do-nothing for a very long time, and hopefully our opponent does not kill us before we can do something about it. Okay, that is not good. That is somehow worse. Oh my god. That is one of the best starts you can have. Um, Alright, play a mountain. Basic land cycling. Let's thin our deck. Get another swamp. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a planes. Uh-huh. Opponent has played their entire hand by turn three. We untap and draw bone shards. So play a swamp. Discard a card. We gotta kill Zabaz. Uh, we're gonna ditch this mountain. So opponent gets to modular. Okay. They play a biting grace. What kind of top deck is that? I'm sorry. Oh my god. My opponent just drafted like every one drop. <laughs> see, see, if we were playing that deck, we might have had a chance. But I know what we're sideboarding. Uh, we're definitely side no sideboarding multiple crack opens into the deck. Um, gosh. All right. So what are we taking out for the crack opens? Might be a better question. Uh, I think we're going to take out Greed. Greed is an excellent card advantage engine. It's just not going to do very much here. Uh, I think we got to go slightly down on the Underworld Hermit plan because I don't know that we're ever going to get there. Um, Flourishing Strike can kill a Flyer. Foundation Breakers and Naturalize in the main deck. I uh, kind of want to drop Bannerhide, Crewshock, and we're going to run another Funnel Web Recluse, because I, I I would like... I know that that increases my, my curve height a little bit, um, but we can block the Flyers that way. I would like to play first. I will absolutely keep this hand. I almost have six through my own first turn. That would be such a Kano thing to do in this situation. We absolutely can't give up the tempo. Gives our opponent a free time walk. <laughs> it's just like... Uh, all right, no one drop. No one drop is good. Play Sinister Starfish. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a forest. They play Angelic Curator, which is a flyer that has protection from artifacts. We play a swamp, and we pass the turn. We will be surveilling on our opponent's end step. Opponent plays a Knighted Mirror. Let's surveil. This has flying, so we can't do anything about it anyway. Um, I'm actually going to keep Bone Shards. If we play Braids, we might need to sack Braids, and that's a decent sack outlet. I mean, provided, of course, she doesn't sack herself. Uh, we untap, we play a Swamp. Let's cast Foundation Breaker and take care of this Knighted Mirror right out of the gate. Of course, we will use its ability, yes. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, they draw. They play a Forest, they play Zabaz. They go to combat. They attack us for one. No blocks. Go down to 18. And on their end step, let's go Surveil, land to the top, we untap, we draw a land, go to combat, we will attack for two. If my opponent has a combat trick and wants to block and use it defensively, that's fine. It would trigger Morbid for Funnel Web Recluse. Um, play a Forest, Surveil, Swamp to the top, play Braids, and let's kill Zabaz now, sacking the Starfish. So, provided, of course, my opponent does not have removal, we can untap, uh, sack the Foundation Breaker, and play the Hermit. The opponent sacked the Planes. They go to combat. They hit us for one. We untap, sack Foundation Breaker, draw a Swamp, play a Swamp, immediately play the Hermit, go to combat, attack for two. Opponent takes two, goes to 16. They untap. They have to sack. They sack a land. And they scoop. Braids won us that game. But you did her job. Oh man, maybe I shouldn't be playing red. <laughs> but it, like, it's it's one of those things that if I if I don't play red, I'm gonna have so many problems. So many problems. All right, run it back. Maybe cutting that hermit was wrong, but I I think in the vast majority of games, especially after that first game, we would have problems. Hopefully we draw another forest so we can play this Dagger Tooth. Uh, I am happy to have a mountain for Unholy Heat here. Second Swamp is nice. Um, good, good thing to have removal. Opponent plays a Plains, passes the turn. We untap. We draw a Deepwood Denizen. That is at least a creature we can cast. Play a forest, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They draw. They play a Plains. They play a Deepwood Denizen. Uh, yeet it into the afterlife. All right, we untap. We draw Cabal Initiate. Play Deepwood Denizen. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a forest. They play a chitter spitter. They make a token. We untap. We draw a forest. So go to combat. Attack for three. Opponent no blocks. They go to 17. 
play a forest, play dagger tooth, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, they make a token, they sack a token, so now they have a 2 2. Opponent plays an abiding grace, but they have no creatures uh, to reanimate, thank god. We untap, we draw a funnel web recluse. Um, play a swamp, go to combat, attack for four. Opponent no blocks, they're gonna take four. I really want to play this funnel web recluse and get the token out of it, but I don't have a way to do that. So play the recluse, pass the turn. So if my opponent keeps trying to make bigger and bigger squirrels, if they don't have any other tokens to sack, we can kill the one squirrel they have for a turn to get in for a bigger swing. I really would like to draw that crack open though, because them having a token engine when we're trying to play something like, I don't know, braids. <laughs> Alright, we draw a swamp. Hmm. Play a swamp, go to combat, and attack. Opponent has some kind of trick. Okay, that is bad. They're gonna double trade. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a card here. Opponent takes three. We proliferate but have nothing to proliferate. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They make a token. They don't sack. They play an arcbound mouser. Okay, I'd really like to draw a crack open. That is not a crack open. Play a mountain. Let's play... Play Cabal Initiate. We need to start building a big board. Let's get a lot of black mana pips on board. Um, I'm not going to exploit here. Uh, if I attack, they actually gain life, because then they'll just reanimate the mouser. Where is my Naturalize? Opponent sacks it. They make the squirrel bigger. Interesting that they're investing so much in going tall. We untap. We draw a mountain, which is not what you want to be drawing here. So, play the Hermit. We'll get a whole bunch of squirrel tokens. <clears throat> now I can bone shards and I can sack a token. And we could kill... Maybe that one extra squirrel wasn't worth it. Maybe I was supposed to play Curator after the fact. That would make some sense. If I bone shard something, it's probably Crypt Keeper. This takes seven cards before it pays off. Okay, let's kill Crypt Keeper. Discard the Mountain. Go to combat, attack here and here. That does basically let them kill the Loathsome Curator for free, if they want to. They take five, they go to ten. They untap, they make a token, they keep it. Foundation Breaker would obviously be the best, um, but I would take Crack Open. We've got three in the deck, total. We're looking at between a one and seven and a one and six chance right now. And I think we have to take out Chitter Spitter first. Okay, Orchard Strider is at least another big creature. So, go to combat. I don't know that I want to attack with the squirrels. Not yet, anyway. This opponent's going to gain one, take three with that block. They're just going to trade there. Okay, if they have a, if they have a combat trick, because why wouldn't they? All right, that's actually really bad. Because we killed way less than we anticipated. Play Orchard Strider. Make food. If we could get a Vermin Gorger, uh, Vermin Gorger would be good. So we could just get some reach and start pinging our opponent directly. They play Mere Scrappling, which means that their guys are going to get bigger every single turn. Because they can reanimate one thing every turn. We untap. We draw Nested Shambler. If I, if I just swing out, things go poorly for me, right? Like, they block here and here. They can block here for free. They can trade. Then they can chump, take three, and we lose, like, everything. Play Nested Shambler. Pass the turn. May I definitely should not have taken Greed out. I can tell you that. That was a mistake. But also, being half my deck and not seeing a single naturalize that I really need. Yep, opponent's making bigger and bigger squirrels. The Mega Token. I can tell you Braids would be almost useless as a top deck right now. Because opponent's getting at least two permanents every turn. They can't attack until it's overwhelmingly lethal. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Well, that completely negates a Vermin Gorger. Yep, so they gain one. They get back a Scrapling. We're going to go ahead and crack these foods. Untap. We draw. Come on. Pass the turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they get back their modular creature, right? But 
I have to hope my opponent somehow miscalculates lethal. Chump here, we get another we just get a token back. So our power level remains roughly the same. If I draw the uh, deranged hermit creature and give every creature menace, I might be able to swing enough damage. But I don't think I have enough mana to do that. I'd still be one mana short. Another underworld hermit. Play a swamp. So I'm going to play this out for the reason I just elaborated on. If my opponent was only making tokens or only gaining life... Well, actually, if they were only gaining life, I would have killed them by now. But if they were only making tokens and not gaining life, we would be fine. Okay, they'll be able to exile our grave. Not that that matters a whole lot. Attack us for 16. I guess we take it. Go to 2. They gain 2 life. We go to 14. We untap. We draw Kaleidoscorch Scorch about 12 years too late. Yeah. All right, we'll keep playing this out. I can flashback Kaleidoscorch Scorch for 5 to do 3 damage to something. But like I said, we can't even play and activate the Dray Keeper. We don't have enough. But I mean, like, that's kind of a limited experience. Um, occasionally you're going to lose to your opponent's bomb, and Chitter Spitter is absolutely a bomb. I'm going to block like this just because of a potential Dray Keeper play. Um, I mean, if I could draw a Naturalize and I could get rid of Chitter Spitter, then my opponent's only gaining life. Uh, and they, We shrink all of their squirrels back down to 1-1s. One -ones. They're basically irrelevant at that point. Um, go to combat. Maybe we can fool our opponent into thinking there's a ninjutsu card in this uh, set. They take the bait. Play Funnel Web Recluse. Investigate. Draw a card. There's Keeper. So if for some reason they decide not to all-out attack and we draw a land, it still won't be enough because they have enough tokens now. Opponent attacks us with seven individually lethal creatures. So we have to block all of them. There is no choice. I'm pretty sure they just right-click attack all we would have lost. Untap. Well, there it is. Jeez, what took you so long? <laughs> I have three naturalizes in my deck, and it took drawing 23 cards to get there. I think that was a little ridiculous. Now I can play Dray Keeper, but they just uh, they right-click attack all, and we don't have enough blockers. Opponent could have done that probably sooner than they did, um, but that is unfortunate. At least we got to see a cool Braids play that match. I'll see you guys in round two. All right, we're on the draw for round two. This hand is alright. Uh, we do need to draw another black source, but we have plays before turn 5, so... Opponent leads on a forest, suspends a rift sower, we untap, draw a mountain, play a mountain, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, rift sower taken down, they play a forest, and are passing. We untap and draw funnel web recluse, play initiate, pass the turn, okay. Rift sower coming off, suspend, okay, opponent plays in a narcomancer. That I will on Holy Heat. Thankfully, they do not have a Chander Storm. We draw another Mountain. Let's go ahead and kill the Anarchomancer. I mean, hopefully. They could have a Pump Spell. Go to Combat. Hit them for two. Really need to draw Black Mana at this point. Verdant Command. Making some Squirrels. Exiling on Holy. Okay. Well, we don't really need Delirium, but the extra Squirrels are a huge problem for us. Because we're trying to rely on the extra advantage generated by Braids. But an Abundant Harvest probably names Land. Well, they got a forest. They play a forest. They play Galvanic Relay. <laughs> oh, two rares? What is this? Why is it always Chitter Spitter? Oh, ridiculous. If I play Braids now, we lose. I can't play anything right now. Um, okay, I, I think we've lost, and I don't want to show my opponent what's going on uh, too quickly here. I'm going to bring in Crack Open. And I'm going to cut, I think I've got to cut Flourishing Strike for a crack open. I don't know if we need the third crack open. I'm going to try and go without it. I would like to play first. All right, we're going to keep. This is a turn four braids if we want it. I'm not sure that's what we want, but we can get it if that's what we want. So turn two, this is a basic land cycle Orchard Strider for Swamp. Then we have Essence, or Flay Essence on turn three. Play Swamp, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, plays a forest, suspends Rift Sower, we untap, draw Vermin Gorger, play Vermin Gorger, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, Rift Sower is ticking down, they play a mountain, they play a Narcomancer, we untap, we draw another forest, basic land cycle, let's go get a swamp, play a swamp, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, Rift Sower coming off, suspend. Opponent has three mana with one cost reduction. Okay, Abundant Harvest. They're probably getting a land. Ragavan. <laughs> okay, 
So that's, I think, in the entirety of the drafts that I've done. This is the 23rd or the 24th draft. We have played against... Oh my gosh, how many Ragavans have we played against? It's been too many, I can tell you that. Blazing Rootwalla, Hunting Pack, Skofos Reaver, Forest. I'm more mad about this Ragavan than my opponent having a cool Storm turn. Also, I probably underrated this card in the actual Storm deck, because when you're doing stuff like this and you're like, oh yeah, I can play a whole bunch of cards next turn, then yeah, it makes sense. But a little mad. Slightly mad. Play Braids. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They have to sack a permanent. They float green mana, they sack Rift Sower, they can't do anything with the mana. If my opponent dashes Ragavan this turn, we can't block it. Because we have to sack this Vermin Gorger. Have to. Opponent plays the Forest out of Exile. They can play Skofos Reaver for one. They can play Rootwalla for one. Uh, they can dash Ragavan for one. But they're probably going to hold on to Ragavan, um, and they'll play the Reaver and the Rootwalla. Yep. <laughs> Oh my god. Come on. The card just like completely negates my strategy. And my strategy is way cooler than that. It's not good, obviously, but come on. We were doing something cool, right? Play a forest. We'll play a funnel web recluse. This gives us a clue we can sack. And a big, big token to block. Or a big 3-5 to block with. So opponent can no longer play... They sack Chitter Spitter? I don't think that was correct, sir. Faithless Salvaging, for one. They discard a mountain. They go to combat, they don't attack. I think that must have been a misclick. Because, like, in no universe do they actually make a play like that. We draw a forest, so now we can play Underworld Hermit. And now we have tokens to sack and they don't. Ah, yes! The legendary third win condition. There's life loss, mill out, and fumbling the moto interface. This opponent has to sack a permanent. And before they Faithless Salvage, they sack the Root Walla. I wonder if my opponent didn't have a stop set on their upkeep, and they went to try and activate Chitter Spitter after the ability had already started to resolve. So they sack a Root Walla, then they ditch a Root Walla and draw a card. They play a Squirrel Mob. Why does it get bigger for my squirrels? That's lame. It's gonna get its essence flayed. <laughs> opponent plays a mount, and their last card in hand is Ragavan. Opponent passes, Braids Trigger. Sack a squirrel. We draw Banner Hide Crew Shock. Play Essence the Squirrel Mob. Pass the turn. Alright. Opponent. Sacks a land. They draw. They play a land. We untap. We sack a squirrel. Draw a mountain. Play a mountain. Play Banner Hide Crew Shock. Pass the turn. Opponent sacks another land. So I think what we're gonna do is okay. I was gonna say on our opponent's end step, we're gonna reinforce Crew Shock and then scavenge on our uh, next turn. And just start swinging a 10-10 with Trample. <laughs> um, did they play any other artifacts we care about? I don't think they do. I think I just have to be paranoid about Crack Open. I'm so glad I took Foundation Breaker because none of these matchups would have been winnable without it. Like, I like having a Naturalize in this format, in your main deck, even in Limited, or uh, even in Draft, not just Sealed. Like, it's necessary. I'm going to mulligan that hand. Okay, this hand is actually pretty good. Put back a forest. We only need two if we draw Dagger Tooth. Opponent leads on a mountain. Plays a root wall. I thought it was going to be a Ragavan, and I was about to be very upset. We draw a Foundation Breaker. Lead on Swamp. Pass the turn. <laughs> I was about to be like, come on! Even in Limited, I can't escape from the monkey. I mean, they might dash it this turn and just, you know, completely prove me right. Okay, it's an Anarchomancer. We're fine. <laughs> they hit us for one. Uh, I am going to shoot the Anarchomancer. I do not want them to have cost reduction for an extended period of time. So go ahead and kill the Anarchomancer. Pass the turn. Uh, next turn, we're probably playing Cabal Initiate. And then, you know, pump faking, we're holding Unholy Heat. But it plays a land. They attack. They do not pump. So they either have something to play or an instant speed trick. They have a Squirrel Mob. We untap and draw Crew Shock. Play a Forest. Play a Starfish. We're going to start trying to manipulate our top decks. Hopefully this can block the squirrel mob. Hopefully my opponent doesn't like, uh, tr like abundant, abundant growth and or what is it the trace of abundance or no, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> like one green mana cantrip. Hopefully they don't have that into like Chatterstorm. Okay, an Arcomancer, an Arcomancer. You got me there. Joy. Uh, pass the turn. I got nothing to play. I could play Cabal Initiate. 
That might be reasonable, but I'm going to try and go for a Banner Heights uh, Reinforce. Let's block a Cost Reducer to do this. They pump Root Walla. We take more damage this way, but we limit the number of things our opponent could top deck and kill us with. Make the Starfish big. Okay, we go down to 10. Another Root Walla, and they are now out of cards. Surveil. Forest to the top. We untap. Draw Forest. Play a Forest. Play Dagger Tooth. So now we can swing at our opponent potentially, depending on, um, I guess, other related events. They can't, they can't just block it with a root wall if we were to attack, so I suppose we would want them to swing at us. They go to combat. They do nothing. Go ahead and surveil. Fifth land. I'm actually going to put in the grave because it's not a black land. We untap. We draw greed. Play greed. Which is a little greedy. Because <laughs> uh, we have... <laughs> we only have ten life. Uh, pass the turn. Opponent draws. You go to combat. No swing. Surveil. Deepwood Denizen is playable, and we can even greed to try and find a land later. Untap. Draw Deepwood Denizen. Play it. Pass the turn. Like, the fifth land, the only thing that fifth land was important for was flashing back Kaleidoscorch, but we're also not winning this game without drawing at least one more land. Opponent Faithless Salvaging. They discard a mountain. They draw a card. Galvanic Relay. Okay, let's see what they exile. Chatterstorm. Oh my god. They're going to Faithless Salvaging for free, then Faithless Salvaging, then Chatterstorm, and they're going to make a massive squirrel mob. So we have to draw black mana for Flay Essence, or we're just screwed. Okay. Surveil. Forest. Uh, you know what? That's got to go in the grave. We need to Flay Essence that squirrel mob, or we're just going to lose. Okay. Okay. Thank goodness. We draw Braids. Which is going to become remarkably next useful or less useful after next turn. Uh, play a swamp. Uh, yeah, we still have to hit the squirrel mob. Pass the turn. Okay. Faithless salvaging coming off rebound. See what they ditch. Mountain. They draw for turn, and now they can play whatever's in their hand plus faithless salvaging plus chatterstorm. This is how you draft that deck. You get a million anarchomancers. They ditch Scophos Reaver, which they can cast, of course. They play it for one mana. They play a land. Shatterstorm. Three one ones for our opponent. So now I think I need to surveil a card into the grave to play Cabal Initiate, so it's going to have Life Link, or so it's going to be a three three, and then when we give it Life Link, it can actually like survive combat. Okay. When it goes to combat, passes. Surveil. That'd be really good. In fact, I think I still actually have to. Do I have to keep that? I think I might, because we can still ditch a single card if we have to, and if we do, it's probably Underworld Hermit. Pass the turn, because I can surveil a card into my grave and ditch Underworld Hermit to not only give this life link, but to make it a 3-3. If we can just play this Underworld Hermit, everything will be fine. Opponent goes to combat, swings out. Okay, so we need to max prevent damage, which means trading here, blocking and killing here, blocking here, Blocking here, I think. We would take six damage, kill most of their stuff. Opponent pumps the root walla. We surveil. It's going in the grave. Ditch this hermit, even though I don't want to. Okay, we proliferate. We make the starfish bigger. They play another anarchomancer, and they pass. I would love to greed, but I think it would be suicide to do that. There's the forest we were hoping for. Okay, one more land, and I can actually scavenge Bannerhide Crew Shock on the Cabal Initiate. So if I Kaleidoscorch here, I can also attack with the Dagger Tooth for free. Because um, if they have a combat trick, I'd rather them use it defensively. They take four, they go to 16. That makes perfect sense. If I have to ditch a card to Cabal Initiate to give it Life Link again, uh, it's probably Foundation Breaker. <laughs> Actually, it's probably Braids at this point in time. Because like my opponent could still like Chitter Spitter at any moment, and then it's like, oh no! When <laughs> it goes to combat... They are passing. Surveil. Funnel Web Recluse is a creature we can play, but we really just need a land. I am going to greed here and go to three. I don't think there's any instant speed tricks that deal three damage to face. Okay, we drew the land. Perfect. Untap. Draw Loathsome Curator. Play the Swamp. Gotta get back out of the danger zone. Go to combat. Attack here. Ditch Braids. <sighs> All right, we are back on track. <laughs> the other two cards that we have in hand I think are too important. The opponent has enough lands that they can just sack lands for a while and it wouldn't be a problem with braids, but 
Thank God. That was a difficult match, and we earned it. All right, I'll see you guys in round three. All right, we're on the draw again. Um, I'm actually inclined to keep this. We have removal and a two-drop we could play. Opponent leads on a mountain. We draw Flourishing Strike, play a Swamp, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, they play a Swamp. They play Viashino Lash Claw. I'm a little concerned about Madness. I'm actually just going to do this. I don't want them to have a discard outlet, because if they play like a Hellmongrel on curve, Bone Shards would be how I answer that, but if they have more than one, it'd be a problem. Okay. Draw another Swamp. Play a Forest. Play Cabal Initiate. Now we can play out Bannerhide Crewshock. Okay, opponent plays a Mount Valus Manticore. They're probably going to ping off the Crewshock by discarding a land. Okay, that makes sense. They go to combat, hit us for two, that's fine. We untap, draw a swamp. It's been nothing but lands, which is kind of good at this point. Play the crew shock, pass the turn. If nothing else, our opponent could ping the crew shock with the manticore by discarding a card, then swing with the manticore if they had no other way to get rid of it. They're ditching a kitchen imp. They're pinging us. Okay, we go down to 17. They tag us for two in the air. Then they pay a life and draw a card. And play a land. We untap. We draw Deepwood Denizen. Play a Swamp. Play the Denizen. If the Denizen survives, I'm probably going to sack it to Curator, and I'm probably going to use that to kill the Guilt Blade Prowler. Because um, that card is how my opponent is going to stay in this game. It's giving them the sustain to make it into the late game. There's the Hellmongrel I was worried about. They ping us for one. We could hit for two. They pay a life and draw. They play a land. They play a mono skeleton. <sighs> All right. Play the hermit. If I attack with the crew shock, they could double block. But if it's in the grave, I could also threaten to scavenge onto a big guy with vigilance. Okay, opponent does not block. They take four. They untap. They ping the deep wood denizen for one. They shoot it with Mono Skellion. Probably going to draw off of Guilt Blade Prowler. And they do. I've got to do some blocking. And I think it looks like that. If my opponent has a trick or can discard two cards to keep the Hellmongrel alive, I play a Reaver. That's bad. <laughs> well, they can't Madness both. And thankfully, they can't get value off a of Revolutionist. But their guy does stay alive, and we're basically dead now. Because that was my whole that was my whole board. Alright, next game. Madness, huh? Uh, I'm gonna bring in a crack open because they have the Manticore, which is an enchantment. I think it's better than Flourishing Strike, and we'll run it back. Alright, we'll play first. The hand is not keepable. This one might be. I think I have to put back the Hermit, though. The Hermit or the Orchard Strider? Orchard Strider guarantees we can have all of our colors of mana and the quantities we need. So I think it's the Hermit that's gotta go. Starfish hopefully can dig us to something. We draw Vermin Gorger. Play Starfish. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp. We untap. Draw a Mountain. Okay, so now we can hold on to this Orchard Strider to actually play it at some point. Play Vermin Gorger. Pass the turn. I'm going to play a Flame Tongue Yearling, which they're going to use to kill the Vermin Gorger. Okay. Surveil on their end step. Second Forest, we got to keep. Play the forest. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a land. Four mana, they play the stupid Manticore. They go to combat. They don't ditch anything. Surveil on their end step. That gives me something to ditch, I guess. So swamp to the top. 
It's something we don't mind ditching, I should say. Kill the Manticore, ditching the Swamp. Pass the turn. We do have to try and dig to another land or another playable spell, though. Opponent plays a Necromancer's Familiar. That is also a big problem. Starfish. Alright, it's a land. Keep it on top. Play the land. Play the big ol' 6-4. Get some tokens. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They draw. They play a land. They play Hellmongrel. They're probably ditching Kitchen Imp. Yep. Okay. They go to combat. Attack for five in the air. We take five, go to 15. Surveil on their end step. Forest into the grave. Untap. <laughs> Draw Swamp. Pass the turn. Um, if I very shortly draw Greed, I might be able to recover, but it has to be, like, next turn. Uh, and then I need a Flay Essence to deal with that Necromancer's Familiar. Or a Recluse in order to block. But it goes to combat. We are gonna block like this. Trade. Go to 10. Okay. Surveil on our end step. Nested Shambler into the grave. That's not going to do enough. Untap. We draw Flay Essence. Okay, that is one of the things I asked for. We can deal with the Necromancer's Familiar and offset all this damage. Uh, I'm going to play out this Swamp. Pass the turn. We have very drastically changed the clock, which I'm sure our opponent will change right back. They play a Patchwork Gnomes, go to combat. They attack for two. So we're taking it and going to eight. Surveil. Uh, at this point, I can keep braids. Sack to gain life. Sack to gain life. Untap. Draw braids. Play braids. Pass the turn. Opponent is going to Madness in a Scophos Reaver. That's pretty bad. For us, they untap. They got a sack of land. They go to combat. We're taking a lot this turn. Now, I could trade Braids off. I don't think I'm going to do that. We're going to take eight. We go to six. Stop on our ends, or stop on our opponent's end step surveil. On Holy Heat, we only have three card types in the grave, and one of those is land, and one of those is creature. This can kill the imp. It might buy me a turn. I guess that's kind of what I'm looking for, right? I guess I could surveil on my opponent's turn. Um, try and put something that isn't a creature, land, or sorcery in the grave. Sack of Swamp. We will not be greeting that much this game. Alright, pass the turn. Unfortunately, this means I am giving up braids. When it goes to combat, block, block. We've got to surveil something like greed into the grave. Crack open is a sorcery, and we already have a sorcery in the grave. So we've got to kill the imp. We're down to two. Nice. Thanks, greed. <laughs> All right, well, unfortunately, I think we could have gone two and one. Uh, I think we got really unlucky in match one, not drawn any of our naturalizes for like 45 turns. I think we got really unlucky that we went up against two opponents that had Chitter Spitter when we were specifically trying to grind them out with Braids. I think this deck is actually fine, and I think there is something to trying to build this kind of deck. I could see things that have a lot higher ceilings. I You could play Black White, you could play the Graceful Restoration, you could play a bunch of the Arcbound creatures and ways to get value out of it that way. You could play Sultai, making more tokens. Uh, if you're going to try and do the Braids thing, just play really, really attrition-y. I think it would be a really fun way to play the game, and probably could be good under some circumstances, but is probably not the way to go for most people. So draft if you dare, but it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. You're all wonderful human beings. Thank you so much for watching.
Bye. Hey, just wanted to give a shout out to my patrons for the month of August. You guys are wonderful and I really appreciate your support. It's been helping me make a lot of good content. If you want your name to show up in this list, there's a link to my Patreon in the description down below if you want to support this channel. Thank you so much.